All right, this is gonna be fun. Uh, it's gonna be a huge build in my small shop. I work out of a 12 by 24 shop, and today, or over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be building a uh, nine foot by almost four feet wide conference table. Um, I've bought 93 board feet worth of kiln dried ash, um, and the one big problem that I have with this build is that my jointer, rigid jointer is only a six inch jointer. So I'm using my thickness planer as the jointer, which means I have to make a flattening sled. I'm gonna do that with a sheet of MDF. Um, all of these pieces are greater than eight feet in length. So that means I'm gonna have to make an extra long sled. I've got an idea in mind. We'll see if it actually uh, pans out. I'll keep you up to date. I think this will help illustrate uh, what I've done so far. So I cut two eight foot long strips at 12 and a half inches wide. With one of them, I kept the full length. With the other one, I cut a two foot piece off of it so that I could add it to this eight foot piece, which of course eight plus two is 10. Uh, and then I cut these thinner strips um, that will run the full length of it to hold these two together at their seam so that they will stay one continuous 10 foot long really flat piece so that I can run it through the, um, the thickness planer. All right, so I got the flattening sled done. I've got it standing up on its edge right now. Uh, this is where the lumber will sit. I added a little cleat to the back end of it so that the lumber doesn't slide off. Um, but there's the, uh, there's the, I guess, top of it where the lumber will sit, and this is the bottom. As you can see, the seam right here is being uh, held together by these long stretchers that are bridging the gap. Uh, so hopefully that'll keep the whole thing nice and solid uh, and we can uh, mill up this lumber. Time to put the lumber on it, start shimming up the void spots and get it ready to push through the thickness planer. about that time to start planing the board to get a perfectly flat face uh, so now I have it on the uh, on the flattening sled that I've made and I've made sure that these are sitting as level as humanly possible now the mission is to go through and shim all of the void um, all of the little void areas you can see I've put a few shims there this is so that while it's running through the thickness planer while the rollers of the thickness planer are pushing the board down the board doesn't wobble like this so these shims will prevent that we just finished planing up the very first board and um, that planing sled or flattening sled worked a treat. I'm so very happy uh, with how it's doing so far. Uh, let me show you the difference between what rough lumber looks like versus what freshly milled lumber looks like. This is crazy. So look at this rough cut lumber versus this beautiful grain pops out. It is so, so awesome. Really, really happy with how this is looking so far. I love this. I don't know what that is, but it looks awesome. <laughs> What a difference, right? Wow.
Okay, the planing part of the milling process is done, which means both of the faces are perfectly parallel to one another. Now it's time to take care of the edges. Uh, to make them perfectly square to the faces, I'm going to be using a combination of a couple of different tools. Uh, I'll start with the track saw, which is supposed to cut a straight line, but mine doesn't. Uh, so I'll fine tune with the electric hand plane and then take it across the jointer a couple of passes, which will give me one perfectly flat uh, edge. And then I'll take it to the table saw to match that edge on the other side to make the two edges uh, parallel, which will make the whole board perfectly square and ready to use. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so a bit of an update. Uh, the track saw did okay. At least it got it flat enough so that I could run it across the joiner um, without some, w without too much of an issue. Uh, the electric hand plane just sitting over there, completely lost cause. That's not going to work. Uh, I'm having a problem keeping it, um, basically keeping it flat so it doesn't tip over to one side or the other. So um, I don't know if this is safe or not, but this is how I have to do it. Uh, of course. When I run it across the jointer, I have to make sure that the flat faces that I created on the planer are flat against the uh, cast iron fence so that it, of course, creates a perfect 90 degrees between the edge and the face. Um, so that's really hard to do because I only have two hands. So uh, when in doubt, clamp it, I guess. Uh, I've got two clamps on this side, two clamps on this side, which is perfectly the width of the board so that I can wrestle the joint or wrestle the board across the jointer uh, and it'll stay really tight against that fence and then give me a perfectly square edge. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. So today's mission is to match the um, square edge to the other side of the board, which requires the table saw, which is way back there in the corner under everything, basically. So uh, I've got to rearrange this place. That's going to take a minute. Now that we're uh, now that we're all set up, I guess here comes the tough part: is uh, getting this thing across the table saw safely. Um, so the edge that we ran across the joiner, the perfectly square edge, is over here. That will be referenced against the fence, uh, and that's what's going to help us match that on this other side to get rid of this rough stuff, so that the board is perfectly square and ready to use. Um, the table saw, of course, one of the most dangerous uh, tools in the shop, so got to be careful especially considering my table saw isn't the best. Um, I guess we'll see how this goes. So I'm having a problem that my fence, the tail end of my fence is drifting, uh, which is making the uh, which is making the cut not square. So uh, maybe I'll just use a clamp to uh, keep it from drifting. We'll see.
Okay, all the boards have matched edges now. However, their thicknesses are different still. So I'm going to do uh, one last round through the thickness planer to get them all in one uniform thickness. Uh, and then we'll put them out on the table and figure out which boards look good, you know, next to each other. Uh, sort of have matching grain orientations. Uh, and then we'll number them. And we'll go from there. Let's do this. Now that all the boards are the exact same thickness um, and they're all perfectly square or as close to perfectly square as I can get them for now, uh, now I'm going to put them all on the table and, um, and figure out which, um, which order they need to go in, like which grain orientation matches um, so that we know how the table is going to be put together. So let's do it. All right, it's uh, pretty much time for glue up. And since I don't have uh, enough clamps to glue up the entire table all at once, uh, I'm gonna have to go get more clamps and we'll just glue it up in pieces. This is pieces one and two. Uh, and to, uh, to help me with the glue up process, I'm gonna use these things. They're called biscuits. Uh, they're not for strength at all. It's literally just for alignment so that the, uh, the boards don't have this sort of effect going on. The biscuits from inside keep the, um, keep the top of the table really, really flat so I don't really have to worry about, um, you know, making sure that the boards aren't, uh, aren't sort of doing like a fishtail kind of thing. So, biscuits, let's cut them. I found something that could potentially turn into a pretty big issue. Um, this right here is a crack in the wood. It only goes up probably 12 inches or so. Um, and I'm not really sure yet where I'm going to cut this board to its proper length yet. So I've got to figure out something to do with this crack. And here's why. Um, this bottom part here, this is the outside, of the, the outside of the table. So you can imagine that after this table is done, if someone were to lean on this part of the table really hard or sit on the table, uh, it could, um, that crack could continue through the entire board. And clearly that would be a massive disaster. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, create some pins out of these dowels here uh, and they're going to sit inside the wood like so and bridge across the crack uh, to help strengthen it up. So um, yeah, that should do it. I'll, I'll do probably like three different pins. Clearly one of them, this is just a quarter inch dowel, one of them isn't really going to do much but uh, you know, power in numbers, right? So let's make a, a couple of these pins and uh, we can drill in the side of the board here, insert the pins with glue, uh, and whenever the table is glued up, you'll never be able to tell because this is going to be the inside edge that's, uh, that goes against the other, the other board. So let's, uh, let's see how that does. Chiming in here really quick. Um, if I've not already mentioned it, I'm going to have to glue this up in stages. So this is the first stage. Uh, boards one and boards two are now together. I literally just put the clamps on. Everything is set. Clean the glue squeeze out up. Uh, so far, looking good. Keep your fingers crossed. As you can see, this table is absolutely massive. Uh, it's not all glued together, it's not one piece. So these three boards are glued together and then these two boards are glued together. 
Uh, I just have them sort of dry assembled with these clamps right now. Uh, because tomorrow I'm taking them to a big uh, production shop in North Knoxville uh, to get them both sent through a uh, wide belt sander, which is basically like my thickness planer here, uh, except way bigger, like more than double the size, probably closer to quadruple the size of that thing. Uh, but it's going to put a really nice, um, uh, a really nice finish. On Last you heard, I was supposed to be taking the table to a big industrial shop to get it flattened one final time. Uh, but I guess in the time between whenever I got it glued up to the time I was going to take it to the uh, to that industrial shop, uh, it developed a twist in it, and um, that's really expensive to have someone else fix on their big industrial machines. I'm just going to build myself a tool, it's called a router sled, um, that, will, that will help me solve that problem on my own so that if I do run into this situation again, I have the tool or tools to, uh, to fix it myself. Now the router sled is all set up, um, everything is as flat and in the same plane as I can possibly make it. Uh, the hardest part of this whole process was having to build the cradle for the router, um, but you can kind of see how this will work. Uh, I've got a big surfacing bit in the router, and I'll just run it back and forth like so. This is going to be a little bit nerve-wracking, but because um, I've never done this before, um, but let's try it out. We'll see how it goes. A little bit of a sneak peek of how um, a woodworker can tell whether a long panel is twisted or not. Um, sometimes, you know, the tools that we use are really highly sophisticated and expensive, and sometimes they're just as cheap as just a regular piece of wood. So um, I've got a piece of wood up here that is perfectly flat, uh, and I also have another piece of wood down here that's a different color. Um, it's actually just a piece of like quarter round shoe mold um, and you put that at the very end and the idea is whenever you sight down the end of the board um, and you just lower 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 and what you want to happen is for the entire back uh, stick that white stick to disappear uh, all at the same time so check this out and now it's gone, right? So that tells us that this board, or at least this face of the board, is perfectly flat. I'm moving the camera up and down so you can kind of see it bob up and down. Pretty neat, huh? All right, um, all of the router sled stuff is done. Uh, the seams between the boards look absolutely amazing now. Um, the horizontal lines that you see, those were just left from the router bit. Those will sand out very easily. Not worried about that at all. Um, as you can see though, I do have some edge work to do. The 
you know, the, the edge between these two panels down there, it fits kind of tightly, uh, but up here it's uh, quite ugly. So got some work to do there. Um, what else? Sanding after that. The base is on its way. A big beefy steel base to hold this heavy tabletop uh, is on its way from Poland. Um, oh, and there's a knot right here that I've got to fill with epoxy. I've never worked with epoxy before, but I've got some. And so I'll fill that with epoxy. And uh, yeah, so the whole table is going to be super smooth. Next step, edge work. We're learning. Finally, 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 I have the base for the table. Um, just got it today from Poland, <laughs> so it's come a long way. And I'm trying to like open it as carefully as possible so that I can save the box for delivery and stuff. Very well packaged, if I do say so myself. I still need, I still need to uh, take all of this wrapping off, put it all together, put the table on top of it, make sure all the mounting stuff works fine. But uh, yeah, so far it looks really, really good. Let's uh, let's move some stuff around and see if we can unbox this thing. <laughs>